In today's tutorial, we're going to learn how to make this cute little single crochet Ami Gurumi pumpkin. You'll need two skeins of yarn. Uh, I've got green and I'm going to be using white for my main color. Um, this one was red heart and it was an orange. Um, you're going to need polyfill, a stitch marker, a darning needle or embroidery needle, a pair of scissors, and a crochet hook. This is a 3.75 millimeter. It's a Odyssey from Furls. It's their turquoise color. And we're gonna start off by doing a magic ring, which you wrap around like this, and you push it up like that, put your hook in, and then you tighten your loop. And then you're gonna chain one and then you're going to do ten, 10 single crochet in the loop. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. eight, nine, and ten. And then you're gonna close your loop. And then we're gonna do increases. Increases means two single crochet in the same stitch. And you're gonna do that in every stitch. So at the end, you're going to um, have 20 single crochets. So you're going to single crochet in the first chain two times, one, and you're going to place your stitch marker in your first single crochet. And then you're going to do another single crochet in that same stitch. And then you're going to do two single crochet all the way around. And I'll meet you back once I get to the last one. Okay, I'm at the last stitch where I put my last two single crochets and I have 20 single crochets all the way around. Kind of pull on your little tail there. Now you're gonna remove the stitch marker and then we're gonna do a single crochet, then an increase, which means you're gonna do one single crochet in the first stitch, two single crochet in the second, one single crochet in the next, two single crochet in the next. So we're gonna do one, and then you're going to place your stitch marker. And then you're going to do two on the same. Then you're going to do one, then two, and then I'll meet you'll do that all the way around, and I'll meet you back. Okay, now you should have. 30 single crochets around your loop. Then we're gonna start on the fourth row, which we're gonna do a single crochet, two single crochets and then an increase. So you're gonna do one, place your stitch marker, and another one in the next stitch. And then you're going to do two in the third stitch. So that's an increase. And then you're going to do a single crochet in the next two. And then an increase. And you're going to repeat that all the way around. And you should have 40 single crochet when you come to the end of the circle. I'll meet you back when I'm done. Okay, now we're at the last stitch where there were two single crochets in the last and I have 40 single crochets all the way around. And now this is the last row that we do some increases on. You're gonna single crochet, one single crochet in the first three stitches, an increase, three single crochet in the next three, 
increase. We're going to do that all the way around. So that's one. Don't forget to place your stitch marker. That's two. Three. Increase. And one. Two. Three. You're going to do that all the way around. And when you get to the last um, stitch, you should have an increase in your last stitch, and you should have 50 stitches all the way around. And I'll meet you back. Okay, now we're at the last stitch and the next rows all the way up to all the way through row 16 are not going to be any increased rows at all. So each stitch around, it's just going to be one single cro crochet in each stitch. So you should have 50 single crochets in each stitch around. Oops, I forgot to put my stitch marker there. And um, you'll do this until you get to row 17. Row 17 is when we're gonna start decreasing. So do your rows, do your rounds, one single crochet and each stitch all the way around until you get to row 17. So stop after 16. And the way you can tell the rows is by counting. There's one, two, three, four, five. This is the fifth row. After the stitch marker, I'm starting the sixth row. So you're gonna do one single crochet in each stitch around until you reach row 17. So stop after row 16. Now you should have 16 rows and your pumpkin's gonna start to curl up on you. Make sure you turn it inside out like this because you want this side of how this looks facing the outside and then we're going to start on the decrease rows where you're going to do three single crochet and don't forget your stitch marker that's one single crochet and you're going to do two and then three and then you're gonna do an invisible decrease. And how you do that, you're gonna go through the front loop of this single crochet. And then you're gonna go through the front loop of the next single crochet. And you're gonna pull up your yarn through both of those loops. And then you're gonna do your single crochet. And we're gonna do that all the way around. So your next Three stitches, it's going to be one single crochet in each stitch. And then your decrease through the front loop only. And then the front loop of the next. And then you're going to single crochet. So do that all the way around. Your last two stitches should be a decrease. Now we're at the last two stitches and we're gonna do the invisible decrease. And then on this next round, we're gonna do two single crochets and then an invisible decrease. So you're gonna do one. And place your stitch marker. two, and then your invisible decrease. One, two. And you're gonna repeat that all the way around. So it'll be one single crochet, two single crochet, and then a decrease. And your last two stitches should be a decrease. And I'll see you when we finish this round. Now we're at our last two stitches where you're gonna do your decrease. And then we're gonna do one single crochet, one decrease, one single crochet, one decrease. 
and we're going to do that all the way around. So you got one single crochet, and you're going to put your stitch marker there, and you're going to do a decrease. Then one single crochet, and then another decrease, and you're going to do that all the way around. If I can get this darn hook through that loop. Okay, and then I'll meet you back. Okay, now we're at the last two stitches, and those last two are a decrease. And now we're going to do decreases in each stitch all the way around. So single crochet two together. So you're gonna do a decrease. And place your stitch marker. And then another decrease. And do that all the way around. And I'll see you when we get there. Now we're at the last two stitches, and those last two are decreased just like they were throughout the round. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take a really long, 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 long piece of yarn. And you're going to cut off your yarn, but you need to leave a long tail to use for sewing and then you're just going to pull it out and then you're going to take out your stitch marker and you're going to stuff it with your polyfill. I know it's a small hole but you can work it in there. Just keep on stuffing until you can't stuff no more. But let's see. Let's get it in there. Gotta pack it in. Pack it in. Keep on stuffing. Keep shoving it in. Just shove it on in there. <laughs> I think I can get a little bit more in there. I think I could get a little bit more. Okay, that's good. Now, you're gonna take the end of that piece of yarn and you're gonna thread it through your darning needle or your embroidery needle. And then you're gonna weave it around through the, through the holes. Let's see if I can get it in the camera really well. I'm gonna weave it over and under. I'm gonna pull it. And this is gonna cinch the hole closed. Weave it over and under. I'm gonna do this all the way around. Well, it's a long piece of yarn, but we're going to use all this yarn for our segments and the pumpkin. That's what gives it its definition. And you can tell when you come all the way, when you get to the beginning of your, of your round, because it has like a weird shaped, weird shaped 
stitch. And you're just going to go through that one more time. I probably cut too much yarn, but it's better too much than not enough. Okay, and then you're going to pull it, pull it tight, and then you're going to go on this side and kind of cinch it shut a little bit better just to make sure the hole doesn't open. I'm going to pull it. And then what I usually do is I take the needle through the hole and I come up through the hole on the bottom. Let me make sure I can get it in the camera. Okay, then you pull it through. Kind of pull it tight and then, whoops, I must have got a little bit of a knot. Oh, let's see. Well, I don't know why it's doing that. Ah, there's my knot, hold on. Let me get that out of there. I can. Okay. Uh, let's see. How do I get that out? Figures this would happen. I'll just pull it real tight. Hopefully I can get it in in that hole. Just a little, a little knot. It's preventing it. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm trying to get it through. Well, it's obviously not working with me, so I'm just gonna take this piece and just shove it in the, shove it in the hole, just to get it in there. And then you're going to take, since it's from the bottom, and you're going to pull it hard like this. And then you're going to weave it through the hole, the top of the hole, and back through the bottom again. Hopefully my yarn won't knot on me this time. And then you're just going to pull it through. Okay, and you're gonna pull it tight, but you gotta be careful not to break the yarn, because sometimes if you pull too hard, it can break. But see how it's starting to do the sections. And then you're gonna take your yarn and bring it back around. Kind of hang on to it so it doesn't slip. And then you're gonna put it back through the hole and back through the hole underneath. And you're gonna do this, you can add as many sections as you want. I usually do five or six, but it's up to you. And then you're gonna pull it tight. I'm so afraid I'm gonna break my arm. <laughs> okay, then you're gonna bring it around again. And then you're gonna go through the hole. Pull it through. Pull it tight and go back around another one, back through the hole, and up through the middle. Sometimes it's hard to find it, but there it goes. Ah, shoot.
cinch it, and I'm gonna do one more. Back through the hole. Pull it tight. And then you're gonna flip it over, kind of hold it tight. And then you're gonna thread through a stitch. And you're gonna lock that in place. Through like this. And then just pull. And let me grab my crochet hook since I dropped it. Okay. And then you can go ahead and take your darning needle off and um, you can cut the yarn. Leave a tail, not really super long, but you know, about like, like that. And then um, we're gonna do the stem. So we've got this part done. Now we're gonna do the stem. So you're gonna take your second color yarn. I have my green. And you're going to chain seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Then you're gonna do a single crochet in the second chain from the hook. And then you're gonna place your stitch marker in that first stitch. Then you're going to do single crochet one well this is actually two single crochet three four five so you're gonna have a total of five single crochet right here and this last stitch you're gonna do two single crochet which is an increase Oops, sorry, I'm out of view. One. And two. And then you're gonna go along the other side and hold your tail there so that way you can crochet around it. You're gonna do one. Two. three, four, and then five. And then you're gonna cut your tail. And you're going to slip stitch into the first stitch that you did. So you're gonna slip stitch right there. And then you're gonna take your piece and you're gonna fold it lengthwise like this. You're gonna chain one and then you're gonna do a slip stitch in each, like in both, both sides. You're gonna connect both sides. So you're gonna slip stitch in this stitch and then slip stitch in this stitch. Or I'm sorry, you're gonna go through each stitch and then you're gonna slip stitch them both together. And then you're gonna do that all the way down Sorry if I keep getting out of focus and just learning how to do tutorials, so.
Then you can also do an I cord, but I, this is a little bit thicker than an I cord, I think, so it's better for the stem. And you're gonna slip stitch in the last ones like this. And you're gonna cut off your, cut off a tail. And you're gonna pull your loop all the way through. You have your stem, and I like how it kind of curls. And then you're gonna place your stem on your darning needle. And then you're going to go through the top of your pumpkin first. And you're gonna go through the hole and through the hole in the bottom, like so. I'm gonna pull that stem up and then you're gonna go back through the bottom. You're gonna go back up through the top and then you're gonna go through the other side of the stem. Sorry if you can't see it that well. And you're gonna push up and then you're gonna go back down through the middle. Whoops. And then you're gonna pull it. You got your stem in place. And you're gonna flip it over and then you're gonna tie your knot. I like to cut, oops, sorry, I bumped the camera. And you're gonna cut off a little bit. And then you're gonna just hide your tails by just going through kind of like the same loop. But you can pop it out anywhere you want. it out up here kind of tug on it snip then you can shove that little piece in there hide it I'm gonna do the same with the white piece shove it in snip and then you've got your little pumpkin and I'm also going to include the pattern in my Etsy shop for only a dollar but the money that I make on my patterns and my crochet items like my scarves and my hats and everything um, I use just to buy more yarn to make dolls for the kids here in my city I hide them um, once a month and let the kids find them and stuff so a lot of the money that I make with Etsy goes towards buying yarn and polyfill and all that good stuff. And I also have some cool um, crochet display holders that these fit furls hooks pretty well. And um, it's got my name, my business name on there. This is a this is inspired by the Death Star on Star Wars. And then I have a Jack yarn bowl, which is so big that. <laughs> I can't even get it in the in the camera, but um, that's in my Etsy shop too, along with some other stuff. But anyway, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to post, and I'll get to you. Thanks.